I'm here in the sunny southeast to join thousands of people who come from all over the world each October to experience one of Ireland's most unique and popular events, the Wexford Opera Festival. Now in its 59th year, it may be one of Ireland's oldest festivals, but it's about to start something which could have exciting implications for the future. We're here this year because the Wexford Opera Festival has taken steps to go green. Will this hinder its success, or will it actually have far-reaching benefits for the festival and for Wexford Town itself? The Environmental Protection Agency have introduced a Green Hospitality Award for businesses that commit to sustainable practices. And the Wexford Opera Festival has been at the centre of the rollout of this programme. Festival manager Eamon Carl told me more. I see you're preparing for tonight's festival. Tell us about the opera. Well, it's our 59th uh, year, 59th season. It's been voted one of the top three opera and musical festivals in the world, Duncan. So really, really extraordinary success. Tell us how you got involved in this whole green awareness area. It grew out of a long association and partnership with the Environmental Protection Agency. It was suggested that we could perhaps use our uh, reputation to influence a green initiative within the business and wider community. And it spawned from there and a number of meetings later we, we launched a green festival project just a number of months ago. You've got lots of businesses involved here. Can you tell us about this? Yeah, we've managed to get 26 businesses signed up to the Hospitality Awards programme and the non-hospitality-based programme, which is e-conservative. It's county-wide, Duncan. We've had businesses sign up from Buntlody, uh, Ross Lair, as far south as New Ross and far north as Gorey. And we have hotels um, from outside of Wexford Town, but we also have some great businesses like the National Heritage Park. So how do you get Irish businesses involved in it? What inspired them to get involved? The project was uh, subsidised. When they signed up to the project, Duncan, they got environmental experts to come in and carry out an audit and a review of their business activities in the areas of water, waste management and energy. And that set the scene for them to try and see where they could cut costs and make their own businesses more sustainable. Great. We wish, wish you the best now at the festival. Thanks. It's going to be fantastic. I can see everybody's excited by it. Yeah, it's and great. it's great to see it turning green. Fantastic. Yes. Thank you. Putting the businesses through their paces was the Clean Technology Centre's James Hogan, who I met at Kelly's Hotel in Ross Lair, one of the many hotels and businesses participating in the programme. On an average green hospitality hotel, what kind of savings can be made in a year? Well, on average, green hospitality hotels have saved in the region of €40,000 per annum through energy, water and waste reduction measures. What are the main areas that you target? Well, I think energy is probably one of the biggest utility costs for the hospitality sector. And um, there's a lot of inefficient technologies in hotels and restaurants, etc. I have an example of a, a chandelier. The chandelier was costing the hotel €3,500 per annum to run. There were tungsten bulbs. By replacing those tungsten bulbs with LED, which is light-emitting diodes, which are 90% more efficient, they can reduce their cost by €3,000 per annum and run the chandelier for 10% of that cost. It's, it's early days yet, it's only four months, but one hotel in actual fact has saved itself €35,000 by fixing a leak. They identified a leak through this programme. What are the environmental benefits? Reduced emissions, uh, reduced CO2, reduced waste going to landfill, reduce need for resources, reduce water consumption, for example. Uh, and also this program in involves sourcing products locally, so locally produced food, uh, which is something we encourage. That's good for the environment also. Small businesses stand to make substantial savings too. Restaurants and pubs save thousands each year just by careful monitoring of things like electrical appliances. Larger hotels like Ferry Carrick and Kelly's Hotel have invested in a wood chip boiler to reduce their energy costs and CO2 emissions and now have expanded into other green technologies. I spoke to Bill Kelly of Kelly's Hotel. So what's here, Bill? Uh, this is our recycling centre. So we have everything from cardboard, plastic, tin, bottle, uh, you name it, we recycle it where we can recycle it. And then here we have our food composter. The, the beginning of the process, you really start to make very raw food waste, everything that comes back on the plate, or also from the preparation of vegetables or meat or whatever, Every, everything goes in here. 
you can see all the food waste going down in. Then it goes through this process where we squeeze out the water, we drive some wood pellets in, the, the food will generate its own heat and create a, a fantastic compost at the end of the six week process. And where does that come out? It comes out here uh, throughout the day and uh, you get a, a beautiful dry uh, compost there, oh. you can see it. And when, it's hot? When, uh, it's really hot, yeah, it's very warm. And where can you put this now? Uh, we, on the garden. So what are the benefits of all of this now, Bill, to you for your business? From a savings point of view, I mean, we've saved probably over 100000 in a year for the last number of years by implementing all these cost-saving measures. And uh, environmentally, we've about 60% less going to landfill. We're now using, uh, saving about 360 tonnes of carbon uh, emissions a year. So there, there's huge benefits, both for the environment, but also for our pocket. Thanks, Bill. Pleasure, Duncan. Keep up Thank the good work. Thank you. Green initiatives like this are growing and will pave the way for the future of tourism in Ireland. Back in the town itself, excitement is building up for the festival's opening night. Matt Crow of the EPA puts Wexford's achievements into a national context. Matt, when you look at our communities in Ireland today, how sustainable are they? We are environmentally living beyond our means in Ireland, as, we are, as, as most Western European countries are too. So we do have a problem with that. And there are two very big issues, which are climate change and reduced natural resources. And these are big issues. And they're issues that people have a lot of difficulty in getting their heads around. So we need to find ways in which people can find hope and optimism. It's the type of things that we're trying to do here in Wexford at the moment with the Wexford Opera, which are practical, real steps that citizens, businesses um, and communities can do. So what about the environmental impact of tourists when they visit here? Probably the most important thing about the Wexford Opera Festival is the fact that the Opera House is in the town. It's not outside of the town. So people are encouraged to walk from one event to the other. The Opera Festival as well is trying to encourage people to come in as an environmentally friendly way as they can. Now, when you bring that together with the businesses in Wexford, particularly in the hospitality area, beginning to get involved in greening their own businesses, then you can see that the overall environmental impact has got potential to reduce quite, quite dramatically. What we want to see is a festival like this being used as a nucleus to grow the whole idea of green communities within a town and within a community and within a county. It's the start of something as opposed to the finish of something. The first performance is about to begin. So much energy and commitment has been demonstrated in Wexford for this initiative. Clearly, there are great opportunities for festivals and events all over the country to ignite the spark and discover that sustainability and economic sense can go hand in hand.